and Ella Toon. Hey guys. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. Yeah, good, thank good, you. Good, thank you. Did you plan your matching sweatshirts? <laughs> yeah, we, we messaged each other today and made sure we were, we were matching. We're not too matchy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know each other from a while back, right? How did you guys meet? Um, it's not been guys, too long, is it? No, Tooney actually was always the year younger than me, so we always just missed each other um, until yeah. we got to the seniors. Yeah, so, so it's actually, not been too long. Fun. That's cool. So um, let's talk about your match this weekend. It is going to be, I think, one of the best matches in the FAWSL this season, Saturday, February 5th. So just a little history of this match, too. You guys probably know, but your last five meetings are three for Arsenal and two wins for Man United. Is that right? Yeah, yeah I think it is, yeah. Yeah. How are you guys feeling ahead of the game? Um. Yeah, excited. Um. I think... Every game in this league is massive and as you've seen, anyone can take points off anyone. So, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to the game against Arsenal and we know it's going to be a big one and it is every time we play each other. So, yeah, uh, it should be a great game. There always seems to be a good matchup when we play each other. I think we both tried to play a lot of good football and I think obviously when we played each other a couple of weeks ago, um, it was quite an even matchup, and obviously uh, United won off a set piece quite late in the game. So, no, I'm excited, but I'm sure it's going to be a pretty tough game. And looking at the table too, you've got Arsenal. You guys are sitting at the top, Beth, with 29 points now, mm -hmm. and you guys are sitting in third place right now, Man with Man United, Ella, aren't you, with 24 points? So it is really close. And Tottenham's just behind you at with three points, you know, in in within reach of you guys. So, yeah, how, how, are you feeling, starting to feel a little bit of the pressure now, Gil, going into this part of the season? Or does it still feel like you have the momentum and you're, and you're moving forward quite, you know, positively? Yeah, I think we've got a lot of momentum. Um, we've, we've played a lot of games and, and we've won a lot of games on the bounce. So it's only good for us and our confidence. Um, but like you say, the table's really tight at the minute and I think that's the most it's ever been. Um, well, that just shows how much the women's game's growing and, and that teams are competing against the teams at the top of the table and, and taking points from them. So, yeah, we'll just take each game as it comes and, and, can, and keep trying to improve and keep trying to get three points every game. Yeah, I mean, obviously the league, I think it shows how far it's come to the point now where, yeah, it's very close. It's not some, there's not just one team running away with it or a couple of teams. Uh, there's four or five teams fighting for actually top three. Um, which is exciting. Um, yeah, like Tony said, I think there's obviously been a lot of games and th at this moment in time, United have probably got a lot of momentum. You know, we, we did that at the start of the season then we've probably dipped in form a little bit. So we're trying to get back to like them winning ways and w that form again. But yeah, it's it's a crazy season. You know, <laughs> we played Birmingham first game of the season uh, this new yeah. year and obviously got beat to the bottom yeah. of the table. So um yeah, like Tooney said, I think anyone can take points off anyone. Like we, as an Arsenal team, um, prided ourselves on beating the teams lower because they were always the harder games to play. Actually, this year we've actually played well against the top teams and the lower <laughs> teams we've not played so well. So, <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting league and it's an interesting um, to be a player in it right now. Yeah, I bet. And it's just getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? I mean, Beth... You've scored four goals this season, and Ella, you've scored five, am I right? I think so, yeah. Yeah? All right, a little competition, a little head-to-head -head action there. <laughs> I'm sure Beth's got more assists, though. <laughs> ah, in fact... I reckon you're doing okay with this as well, oh, sure. Beth, uh, didn't you just uh, break the record for most number of assists ever in the... Like... I equalled Kazkani's on 35, so I need one more to break it. <coughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hey. oh, hi. <laughs> what's, what's it? What's your uh, biggest cheerleader's name? Rona for Corona. Oh, <laughs> oh did you oh. get him, her? Her. Girl? Her. Did you get her. her during Rona times? We did, yeah. Oh my gosh, how cute. So she's just being <laughs> needy now. <laughs> she she's cheer, cheering for you for your for the goals this weekend i guess she is she's an art big arsenal fan she doesn't is like she man united. she doesn't like man united doesn't she that's weird yeah. mm. huh. 
Um, predictions, go on. Who's going to win? Oh, that's always tough, isn't it? It yeah. is a tough one. I do think it's going to be a close game. Really close. Um, I think on the day it's going to be the quality of the forward players. Whoever finishes the chances that they have. Um, Tooney could disagree, but I think in the first half we probably could have scored a few goals against them. Mm-hmm. And we didn't. And then, yeah, they ended up beating us 1 0. So I think it is very important on can, which team can she take their chances. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think there's a lot of half cut chances, and, and probably in a different game, it might have been a bigger scoreline. Um, but yeah, like you say, it's whatever team turns up on the day and, and wants it more. Um, but I think it's going to be a really close game and it's going to be really exciting. Yeah. What is it like playing against each other now that you guys do know each other and your friends and you obviously play, you know, I know how it was playing against my friends, but how was it for you guys? To be fair, yeah. we, don't actually, we don't clash too much on the pitch because we're obviously like opposite ends yeah. of the field. Yeah. Tony's think- a different person Ooh. on the football pitch. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? She's a bit feisty. I'll say that. But off bit, pitch, yeah. That's she's being not. polite. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? She's feisty on the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Mm. I'm feisty on the pitch because I want to win. But I, I think we're all right, though, aren't we? Like we we don't play up against each other that much, or we don't really yeah. go near each other on the pitch that much. So. Yeah, it's always weird playing against your mates, but I suppose for 90 minutes, they're not your mates, are they? <laughs> Frenemies, enemies till the end of the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, well, we'll see what happens then. Uh... Yeah, watch us have a big <laughs> scrap on the pitch. Now. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've put it in your heads. So um, you guys also have kind of new, newish coaches. LA, you, you know, had Mark Skinner come in. Uh, middle of last year, I believe it was, and Jonas is new as well, Beth. How how are you guys liking the new coaches? Jonas is pretty animated there on the sidelines, isn't he, Beth? He's such an interesting character because it's as if, like, he, he flicks a switch. Because, honestly, in training, in the changing room, before, after, during the game, he's so, so calm. <laughs> and then he literally gets, obviously, in the last game against United, there was obviously, like, a big... Um, bust up between him and one of the United girls. This is where Tooney became Incredible Hulk, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What did you do? I was just sticking up for my teammate, that's all. Oh, in what way? What did you do? I think there was she, kicked, little... she, kicked, she kicked me in the face, accidentally. Oh. And the ma- he didn't like it, so he was shouting at her, and she kind of just gave it back a little bit. So. And then I ran over. And then Ella became and didn't do the anything. rescue with it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Jonas is a very interesting character. Like I do really enjoy playing under him and his mm. style of play and how he wants us to play. But yeah, he he looks a different man on the sideline sometimes. Mm. Is that sort of like Ella, where she she's feisty on? The- yeah, basically she gets on the pitch and fl- flicks a switch as well. <laughs> <laughs> Are you super mellow off the pitch, Ella? Yeah, I'm. I'm quite chilled on that off the pitch, like have banter, won't be too serious and that. But then when I step over the white line onto the pitch, then I'm I just I'm I'm a bit more serious and uh, I just wanna win. And what what's Mark like, Mark Skinner as a coach? No, he's quite chill to be fair. Um I really get on with Mark and he's come in, he's done a, a great job so far. I think it took us quite a bit to, to click and to understand his style of play, but I feel like we've really clicked as a team and and we know what he wants from us now and yeah he's been great for me personally as well um we've had a lot of one-to-one time and he knows he knows what he expects of me and what I expect of him and he'll keep pushing me to be better so yeah he's been great coming in and I've really enjoyed working under him oh that's great that's really good to hear isn't it that you feel like you guys you guys can continually develop I guess you kind of want to get that as well because you're you just broke into the Lionesses team and you're you know, looking to make a mainstay there, I guess, moving forward as well. So it's always good to have a coach that can help you stay there. Yeah, of course. Um, and, and he really believes in me as well, which was, is one of the main things that you want from a, a coach. Um, but yeah, like you say, I've I've just got into the Lioness team and I obviously want to stay there and, and keep playing there. So he will help me do that and he'll keep trying to help me improve as a person and a player um, so that I can achieve things that I want to achieve. 
So we're looking at the table now, you guys have Arsenal, Chelsea's got one game behind, so they, they are owed a game. Man United, you guys are in third. Um, and then we've got Tottenham in fourth place, and then Man City in fifth with one point behind Tottenham. <laughs> Beth, how has it been for you having more of a competitive North London derby with Tottenham this year? Yeah, no, it was exciting. Um, it was an interesting game. Again, a game where we probably should have scored a lot more and didn't. It's <laughs> been our downfall maybe a little bit recently, but um, no, it's always nice. Like I said, the competitiveness of the league's getting so much better and these games then become more competitive. Um, so no, it was it was an exciting game to be in. Probably a nerve-wracking one for people watching who were Arsenal fans because we didn't score till the equaliser till later. Yeah. But, um, no, it, it's it's great and it was a great atmosphere on the day as well. Nice. That's so cool. And Ella, the Man City, Man United, Manchester Derby has been amazing as well. I mean, like literally probably my favorite matches um, to watch so far. And traditionally, you could say it was maybe Man City that had dominated that, but it's certainly changing. Uh, Manchester feels a bit more red this year. What do you think? Yeah, um, that sounds better. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> Those games are the games you grow up and want want to be involved in, uh, the Manchester Derby. And, yeah, they've been great games every time we've played. They've been really tough matches and anyone can win. And, yeah, I think the last one just showed how much we've come a long way and how much we've clicked to the team. Um, and that was a great game. It had a sending off, it had goals, it had everything you want in a game of football. So, yeah, those games are really exciting to be a part of. and. Yeah, hopefully we can win some more uh, Manchester Derby. Nice. And it's always nicer when the sending offs come from the other team, right? <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you also won uh, Barclays Player of the Month in December. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. Uh, finished the year on a high. Um, really happy that um, I was voted Barclays Player of the Month. Um, and I just wanted to continue that coming into the, into the new year. Um, but yeah, it was a special way to to top off uh, an unbelievable year for me and yeah loved it nice and Beth you've won a few of them players of the month as well huh how many have you won this season mm -hmm. no I've only, I've only um I won was it the September player of the month so I think so yeah yeah nice. no, no I, I think I'm the same as Tooney I think I've come into this season and and the new year and you know wanted to be consistent and play good football mm -hmm. and you know, try and stay in the best form that I can right now. So I think that's been important for me to be consistent throughout the season this year. Yeah, and that that is hard, isn't it? Because you guys have a lot of matches and you've got, you as well have the Champions League and, you know, the, the tournaments and the cups and all the different types of competitions. I had a quick question. What, what was it like playing with the US players? Was that like a highlight in the career or is it a bit overrated? Like, are they, is that, are they that good? You know, the Americans yeah. always like to pump themselves up. I mean, I absolutely loved it. Like, Tobin was one of my favourite players growing up, so to be alongside her was unbelievable at that time in my career. Um, and Kristen as well, they were both great on and off the pitch for young players. They were someone to look up to in the changing room and to learn off. Um, and now Beth's got Tobin in her changing room, so I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how's yeah. that? Yeah, no, me and Tobin get on really well, I think. Um... I've played with Tobin and Heather O'Reilly. Um, right. She was at Arsenal as well and got on really well with her, but I'm quite an energetic person on a football pitch and in training, so I quite suit their American level sometimes. Yeah. So I think that's why we get on so well. Tobin and Heyo, they were just the ultimate athletes and professionals. And yeah, they sometimes what you need in the changing room, you know, we said recently at Brighton, um, she was like girls we've got another half like it's fine whereas people would be stressing like mm. whatever she's just like it's another half let's just say it's nil nil and go out and score some goals whatever and it's just it's chilled but it actually get, gives you energy so um yeah whatever whatever Tobin said then obviously worked because we ended up winning 2-1 so that was 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 great but yeah it's great it's great to have them types of people in the changing room sometimes yeah, that sounds amazing. Um, and you're going to need a little bit of backup this year, Beth, because you're in the Champions League still as the only uh, British team, actually, the only yeah. English team left, right? 
How is it? How has it been this year with, you know, cancellations, postponement of matches, and then you also have Champions League and that all on your shoulders as well? It's been tough. I think it's probably caught up to us a little bit in terms of we had so many games from September to December because we we obviously with the new um, system, we had to then go through round one, round two. So we had to go to Russia, play two games out there. Then we had to come back and play another qualifying game to then get in the group stages. So this it's been a hectic um, schedule. And then you've got obviously six uh, group games plus Conti Cup coming in, uh, league games coming in, then COVID hits the team, somebody drops out, injuries come in. So it's been difficult. And I think we've been lucky enough that we've had quite a lot of depth, but it's kind of been one game we've had a full team, the next game we haven't. Like it's been so like inconsistent and that's probably been hard for a lot of teams. Um, but we've never got like, the, again, not just for me individually, but as a team, you need consistency and we haven't been able to get that in a while. So that's been difficult. Um, but we've coped with it pretty well considering. Mm. Um, and obviously, we've got Wolfsburg in the quarterfinals. Um, yeah, that's just, that's just been announced that we're going to play that at the Wolfsburg Men's Stadium. So, yeah, hopefully, it'll be a cool game to play. Very in. cool. Yeah, we'll see how we get on in that one. Yeah, it's a great stadium. I might be a little biased though, having played in Wolfsburg, but yeah, um, probably. <laughs> Um, but Ella, you guys, it must be part of United's aspirations to get into the Women's Champions League. So what, what would it be like to qualify for the, the first time? Because this year, it's the top three teams that are going, isn't it? Well, yeah, obviously we had, we wanted to do that last year and we were just one point off qualifying. Um, oh, terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I know, got it. Behind, um, behind Arsenal. Yeah, behind Arsenal, yeah. Uh, so I think that's massive and it's something that the club aims towards and obviously the players as well that we have. Obviously, you want to compete at the highest level and Champions League is an unbelievable uh, thing to be a part of and that's not something that we've always wanted as a club um, but you've got to take each game as it comes in the league and you can't you can't look too far ahead because anyone can take points off anyone like we said the league's so tight at the minute so you've got to take each game as it comes and hopefully by the end of it we will be um, in the top three and and hoping to get Champions League but for now it's about taking each game as it comes uh, but yeah the team really want that and that's what we've set ourselves right from the start of the season Nice and have you guys because the zone is now showing all of the UEFA Women's Champions League uh, globally and at the football you can also watch it on, on the active football platforms because of the partnership they have with the zone. Have you guys been watching more of the Champions League than you ever have been before because of that? Yeah, I, my mum and dad have it on every time there's a game on. Um, we just love watching football and yeah, obviously we watched the Arsenal Barcelona one and Chelsea Wolfsburg and all those games and just because we want to be a part of that, um, we want to be playing Champions League football, I do. Uh, so, yeah, it's great that they, they're being shown on telly and that everyone can watch it. And obviously you want Arsenal and the Chelsea's to do well in that because they're representing English clubs. Um, so, yeah, it's been great to be able to watch. And Beth, have you as well? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, it's easy to access, you know. You, I think the women's game in the past, you've been looking for links far and wide and can't get yeah. anything, like... It's so difficult to get Champions League games, and that shouldn't shouldn't be a thing. So, the zone and yourselves out of football, like it's been amazing that you have been able to provide them platforms for people to actually watch European football, watch the best teams in each um, country play against each other. Um, obviously, we had Barcelona, so they yeah. still us. They were just a different, honestly, different gravy, but. Uh, it was humbling when we played them. Obviously, we were playing really well at the time. And then we played them and they were just honestly like on a different level. And they're the levels you want to aspire like and to be like. It's like Man United want to be us. We want to be like Barcelona, do you know what I mean? So it's nice to be able to be one, play against them types of teams and two, watch, watch them easy in other games as well.
Yeah. And yeah, we, we did watch, I was it with Benfica watching or mm -hmm. running that match. So I wasn't at the game. Otherwise I would have gone to Arsenal, but yeah, that was, that was a hard game, but it was also, you know, there were a lot of fans there. It was amazing. And yeah, Camp no. New is now sold out, you know, for the Real Madrid game. It's, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, that's insane that they've sold Camp New up and so quickly. Like, yeah. It's what you want to see, but that's, yeah, it's incredible. You'd love to be at that game. I bet the atmosphere would be insane. Yeah. What about Chelsea bouncing out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, anyone? Obviously, we want English yeah. teams, like uh, Ella said earlier, you want English teams to do well because it's better for the league. And, you know, we're pushing for this to be the best league in the world. So we want them t teams to be competing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're also rivals, so it's probably why I mean <laughs> comment as quickly. But no, um, no, obviously we want English teams to do well. So it was a shame to see them get put out, and the way that they got put out as well was not ideal. Yeah, Ella, who were you cheering for more though, Manchester United? I mean, sorry, Arsenal or Chelsea? Oh, that's a tough one. That <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> well the in <laughs> <laughs> just say it's because we play in red and united play in red yeah yeah that's why yeah mm -hmm. all <laughs> oh, right right keep keep the color montage the same <laughs> who's gonna win the champions league this year i'm gonna i mean i'd love to say arsenal and yeah. i want to win it but barcelona are just different level yeah i would say barcelona like watching them is just unbelievable like we know how good Arsenal are as a team and we've played against them and they've beat us and then to watch Barcelona then be, go on and beat Arsenal like that was, mm. I was like wow they have some unbelievable players and the way they move the ball and stuff is just so so nice to watch so yeah I think they they might win it this year. Yeah we had Vicky Losada on who obviously plays at Man City now talking about mm -hmm. Barcelona and the style they play and all of it. it was really really interesting hearing hearing about it and they definitely have a system don't they what about Juventus you know I mean obviously they took the place that everybody thought Chelsea was but we've got now Bayern Munich from Germany PSG Lyon from France the two Spanish teams we mentioned Wolfsburg from Germany Arsenal representing England and now Juventus from Italy it's great to see the spread isn't it i uh, i like juve as a team like just as a club in general obviously our old manager joe is in charge of them now yeah so i'm i'm not I, he was a very good manager he had teams organized and he got the best out of players and i think that's what he's doing at juve right now so um i think yeah i watched a few of their games versus wolfsburg and chelsea and mm. they stood stood on their own two feet in them games and probably could have won them as well um and defended so well um, away to Chelsea to, you know, put themselves in the best position to qualify, which they did. So, um, no, I'm excited to see what they're about um, in, the, in the next few games. And now moving on to another fun topic of the <laughs> women's Euros hosted here in England. How fun, your guys' home country. How exciting is that? Are you guys stoked? <laughs> yeah, really yes. exciting. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's going to be massive for the w women's football in England. Um, and yeah, it's going to be exciting to hopefully be a part of, um, to have stadiums full and to play in big stadiums um, and host the Euros is something you always want to be a part of. And yeah, it's going to be massive for the women's game and, and hopefully we'll get um, packed out stadiums. Yeah, and I did. We started off with the head to head. I made you guys answer some very awkward questions, <laughs> so thank you for playing with me. But now, on the lionesses, you obviously play together, and you both. This is incredible. So you both have scored hat tricks fairly recently as well for the qualifiers, the World Cup qualifiers. Only like a few days apart from each other. Was that on purpose? Is that like <laughs> the hoodie thing or what? <laughs> I mean, Tooney took a hat trick amazingly. I mean, the conditions were not ideal in La away to Latvia when we played that game. It was freezing cold, windy, wet, um, not the greatest pitch in the world. And yeah, Tooney made a hat trick look easy. So, um, and then Beth made us look even easier by coming yeah. on as a club and, and scoring free. And yeah, it was just yeah, it was just amazing to be a part of for Beth and 
obviously she got the fastest hat trick and, and all that and it was just yeah I was really proud of her and just a special occasion as well um mm. and then obviously I wanted to go and do it so because it was pretty special it was in Wembley wasn't it yeah thick nice yeah no um <laughs> yeah it was it was honestly an insane night I honestly don't know what happened I couldn't even tell <laughs> Every, you. everything just fell so nicely to your best literally when does that ever happen <laughs> when normally it bounces off your shin yeah honestly <laughs> every time it dropped to me it just either felt great or I don't know it was just so weird but honestly it felt surreal like mm. it felt so surreal and obviously at Wembley and there was a pretty pretty cool ca- crowd there as yeah. well and atmosphere so yeah um yeah no that it was nice it was nice it was a nice night <laughs> it was nice it was it was nice you don't know really how it nice. happened it went off your shit so i think you guys are a bit humble right now a bit too modest for my like for my half american taste but um <laughs> that's all right i think you 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 can be modest but beth you debuted for england in 2018 you've mm-hmm. played 32 games and you've scored in half of them Six or well, 16 goals you you have like literally a 50 percent goal ratio and Ella you started only in last year in February literally almost a year to the day not even a year and you've only played yeah. eight games and you've scored six goals <laughs> don't tell me about things coming off your shins you two honestly Tooney's ratio is better than mine <laughs> <laughs> I take that ratio we scored three of them We've just got to do it in the big games now. So hopefully we yeah. both get picked for Feb and we've got yeah. to do, do that against the likes of Germany, Canada and Spain. So that's right. That's now the difference in the consistency that I was saying earlier. Like we want to put our best performances in against them types of teams when actually things are a lot harder in games and you're still producing good football. So we've got um, a few fan questions, if you guys don't mind. We put it out there, obviously, that you guys were going to be on the platform, and the Atta fans were very excited. Um, so I'm going to throw these at you. Who are the hardest defenders to play against? There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> Football's but hard. I, my, my hardest player to play against is Kim Little. I think she's um, unbelievable. Beth probably plays with her and says the same in training, but like she's... The way she uses her body, um, yeah, she's just a great player and someone who I look up to and want to aspire to be like and, and take little things from her game into my game. But, yeah, I think she's an unbelievable player. Nice. Beth? Yeah, Kim, Kimmy is insane, to be fair. She does yeah. it day in, day out in training and you just see it every day on a match day. And she's probably the most ultimate professional you'll ever, ever meet in the game. Like, she's just just everything literally to a T and she's done that consistently throughout her career like so yeah I I mean I would agree if, if playing wise with Kim I think I've had some good matchups with Lucy Bronze over the years uh, being a winger and she's just a hard full back to play against because as a winger you think oh I've got maybe a little bit of pace to get past them here yeah. and then next thing you know she's there again I'm like <laughs> geez but um no Bronze's pretty powerful and tough mm. player to play against and get past yeah mm-hmm. what is your most embarrassing on-field moment i have so well, many it's hard right see i don't have too many my worst one <laughs> yeah i missing, don't like it missing like a sitter okay. yeah but i, I remember have... yeah yeah i don't have many but i remember when i was at city and i was younger i came on i think it was probably my first like time coming on in the WSL and I just went, I just was running and then just fell and just ah, didn't use my arms. It was just on the floor <laughs> and it was so embarrassing. And I just remember Kira Walsh absolutely crying, laughing at me. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, this just sums it up. How old were you then too? I'd have been about 17, 18. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. young enough to actually be embarrassed about that. Yeah. Yeah. It was embarrassing. <laughs> oh. Oh. What about you, Beth? Anything else? Any embarrassing ones? I don't really have... No, and I'm not a person who gets embarrassed too easily. Mm. Yeah. I'm one of them. I'm like, people try and embarrass me. I'm really good at doing that to people, but people yeah. doing that to me. <laughs> What's like the most embarrassing thing you've done someone else? I mean, on the daily, I normally wind Kim Little up, who's not like... <laughs> I'm really good at embarrassing her and making her red, but maybe yeah. I'll keep it PG for today. For the <laughs> 
when I went to um, Sweden, they had like really short shorts when I was playing mm -hmm. and I put them on backwards because I was like, these are tiny. They're, I was so like annoyed <laughs> that they were so short that I didn't even really look where the back or the front <laughs> was. And they had like all of the, you know how they have all of the sponsors like yeah, everywhere on the shorts. shorts. Mm -hmm. So I wore like the shorts backwards the whole first game. <laughs> yeah, it's great. That's what I'm known for in Sweden. Great pictures. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Um, this is a nice one. How did you guys become a nightmare to every defender facing you? Basically, how did you get so good? <laughs> did we? <laughs> yeah. Have we really? I mean, uh, people are probably sick of me saying it, but obviously mine is probably like the frustration of not being picked for the Olympics. Mm. And kind of wanting to come back and prove people wrong and mm -hmm. that don't give a attitude like just go and do me and don't overthink anything and I think when it's I work. am it, well thanks honey <laughs> but yeah no honestly I've just tried not to overthink things um and just do me and I think I play my first my best my best football when yeah I just do things instead of thinking about it mm. So easy to say, so hard to do, isn't it? Honestly, oh, no, no. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Last season, I said it to myself every game, but didn't do it, mm. or as effective as I have this year. So, I was spoke. I literally spoke to one of the Arsenal girls the other day, and she was like, "I never really understood." One more time. <laughs> <laughs> so needy, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um. She said, when you said last season, like you struggled to get going, but you didn't, mm. I was always playing, so she could never understand why. She's like, I'm kind of having them moments this season. I can't get myself out of that rut, but it's so hard. Like you can easily say to yourself, today, just play well, do this, do that right. But it's so easier said than done. Mm. And I 100% 100 believe that it's mindset and you can control it, but it's easy it's a hard thing to control at the same time yeah but yeah for me this season that's probably why it's been a lot better for me how did you do it why did you change it what like was it just you were pissed off that you didn't get picked you were just annoyed that you didn't get picked or did you work with someone did you have a psychologist or uh i actually didn't i think i was frustrated um I asked the questions by the managers that i didn't get picked by probably yeah. not all the, the answers that i expected to hear or actually didn't get the closure in terms of what I needed but I actually had the time to physically and mentally switch off during the Olympics um, uh, and just refresh myself came back into pre-season worked hard in the off-season and yeah maybe that time to switch off was what I needed um, even though I didn't know that at the time so yeah well that's super interesting mm does feel like things just keep going and going and going these days yeah. don't they in women's just football. all merges into one yeah for sure 